2020 Mentor Channel. Hi, and welcome to this briefing on how to manage smoke and fumes with odors in flight. The aim of this briefing is first to recall to you the Airbus philosophy applying to all smoke and fumes related events, and then I will explain to you why our smoke procedure is the reference to deal with all smoke and fumes related events, including fume with odors in flight, and then we will see what are our main recommendations and also the materials that you have in hand in order to efficiently deal with all these events while remaining in the side of the safety at all times during the flight. So let's start with some background. But first of all, it's very important that we all have in mind the meaning of the wording that we use in our procedure. So we'll review these definitions. First, definition of the smoke. So this is the product of burning material that are made visible by the presence of small particle. This is the IKO definitions. Then a fume, according to the IKO, is a gaseous compounds which are not visible. This means that in case of fumes, you will not see anything, but you may, depending on the source, you may have an odor or not. And finally, the odor is a particular smell, especially an unpleasant one, but not necessarily toxic. This means that the odors may either come from the fume or from the smoke. And in our smoke procedure, when we mention smoke and fumes, we also include the case of fume with odors. Maybe you remember that our smoke procedure comes from an industry initiative that was created after some significant events and was gathering some associations, some airlines and also the main manufacturers worldwide. And our procedure is the outcome of a huge work that has started early in 2005. And the aim of this initiative was to provide the flight crew and the cabin crew with some procedure that will allow managing safely all the in-flight fire, smoke and fumes, and also to agree on a common template. So this is what we have done. One of the main outcome was to merge the three separate smoke procedure that we have in the past into a single one, the smoke fume avionic smoke procedure. And this was in line with one of the main feedback that we got from you operators and also what we have learned from the event that we had in the past, that there was some uncertainty brought by the fact that we had three entry points and also loss of time in choosing the right entry point. So it was better to have one single entry to manage any smoke or fume events with also some key actions, which are the immediate steps, in order to be able to ensure the safety of the flight at a very early step of the event. In addition, our smoke procedure is in the flight manual, so it is an approved procedure in line with the regulation. And it answers also to that advisory circular issued by the FAA that you can see here, which highlights one of the major aspects that we cover in our procedure, that a fume may be the first indication of a growing fire. So never ignore a strange odor and try to identify the source as soon as possible. So in case of any doubt, as long as you are not 100% sure of the source of the event, you must apply the smoke procedure. Then this is really important to have in mind that any fire or smoke or fume event is a complex and dynamic one. Complex first because at the time where the event starts, most of the time you don't know what is going on, but at the same time you have to quickly analyze the situation and take appropriate decision to recover the management of the situation. And also dynamic even because sometimes the situation may escalate quite quickly if some key actions are not taken early enough. That's the reason why in case of any smoke related event, you will have to face these three challenges, the time, 
the communication and also the identification of the source. And we have designed our smoke procedure so that it tackles these three main challenges. Concerning the time first, this statement that you can read here comes from the advisory circular of the FAA and are the conclusion of some fire tests that were conducted by the regulatory authorities at the time of the industry working group and they are showing that really the time is key. That's why we request in our smoke procedure to be land as up minded. Then, because the situation can uh, escalate quite quickly, the communication between the cockpit and the cabin is really essential at the earliest stage of the events. That's the reason why all our cockpit, but also cabin crew uh, smoke related procedure include a step about the communication. Finally, concerning the identification of the source, some sources of smoke and fumes are easy to locate because they are either located in accessible areas or monitored by smoke detectors so they trigger some ECAM alert or local warnings. But for other sources that you can see here on the second group, such as avionic smoke or air conditioning smoke, they are more difficult to locate and to be confirmed at 100% because they are not uh, necessarily monitored by smoke detectors. So for these events, we provide relevant troubleshooting procedures. So once you have taken the decision to enter the smoke procedure, you will first anticipate the diversion, meaning to prepare the strategy, and then you will apply the immediate steps of the procedures. These steps are quick, simple, reversible. They are very efficient also in stopping any recirculation of smoke and fumes. And finally, they enable the flight crew protection and the communication very early in the event. Just few words about the diversion to remind you that as we explain it on the FCTM, entering the smoke procedure does not mean doing the diversion. The idea is really to be in a mindset of a diversion, meaning preparing the strategy, contacting the ATC during the time the pilot monitoring will perform the immediate steps and being prepared to initiate it if the situation dictates. And then according to uh, the FCTM schematic, if you can answer yes to the two questions that you can see, then you will end the procedure and resume normal flight. Whereas if your answer is at least no to one of these two questions, you will have to initiate the diversion and uh, proceed with the small procedure few words for the cabin site to remind you that in the cabin we have two-thirds of the events that are easy to locate because they are monitored by some smoke detectors or because they occur in some areas that are accessible such as for example the EFE boxes or the VCC or the lavatories but we have still one-third of the smoke and fume events that remains difficult to locate typically events occurring be behind the ceiling panel or behind the side wall panel. So in line with the FAA advisory circular that we just have seen, the cabin crew procedure share the same philosophy as the flight crew procedures, meaning that the cabin crew will manage any smoke or fume event as a potential fire until proven otherwise. So for the cabin area that are not equipped with detectors, the cabin crew must use all their senses, the hearing, the touch, the vision, the smell, and also all the passengers' input uh, to be able to confirm any smoke or fume sources. And we look at some uh, abnormal indications such as noises or abnormal warm surfaces and also some unusual odors. And these inputs will help the flight crew in their decision making. So now that we have in mind the philosophy of the smoke procedure, let's review the specific case of fume with odors in flight. 
The main sources of fume with odors are either related to engine or APU oil leak or also to air conditioning contaminations by the packs or by the bleeds. But there are also many other reasons, such as uh, the example uh, that you can see. So in addition to all the challenges that we just have seen, the whole crew must be very well prepared to be able to detect and to identify the odor so that the right decision is then taken by the flight crew. They will be able to assess all of the following. What is the probable source? Is it a threat or not? If it is a threat, should I enter the smoke procedure? And then if I enter the smoke procedure, should I initiate a diversion? In the aircraft, the possible sources of odors are quite huge, so most of the time it's difficult to accurately look at them. In addition, it's very tricky to establish a link between a given odor, the reason behind and the associated risk. Then our perception is subjective and depends on our own way to name the odors. Finally, an odor can depend on our position on the aircraft, depending if we are in the cockpit or, for example, the aft cabin, and also depend on the flight condition, humidity and temperature on board. So, for sure, our nose is not a certified device, however, our added value as a human being is really key to efficiently analyze the situation. So, first you have to remember that for all smoke events, time is critical because there is a risk of hidden fire or smoke. And then also remember that it's really important to share the information and the assumption between the flight crew and the cabin crew. So the information must be accurate enough and uh, the same language must be used uh, to uh, describe the situation. So because of all that, we recommend at Airbus that the flight crew and the cabin crew are trained for that. And this recommendation is also supported by the IKO with that circular about guideline on education, training and reporting of fume events and also uh, supported by this SAFO that uh, requests also to create specific guidance for the flight crew and the cabin crew to manage uh, the fume with odors. So based on that, let's review what are the materials and our main recommendations. So you will find all the operational recommendations and techniques in the FCOM, QRH, FCTM, CCOM and getting to grips with cabin safety brochure. Especially in the FCTM, you will now find the list of most probable sources of odors. Then when we have identified some specific recurrent issues such as APU oil odors, we have provided some alternative means to mitigate also the potential of odors. This is the case for the preliminary cockpit preparations and also for the parking phase. Finally, we have released that ISI article on how to manage smoke and fume with odors in flight. This article is available on the Airbus World Portal and also on our WIN platform. So based on these materials and in line with the IKO and the regulation, we encourage you to create your own internal tailored guidance, meaning a guidance that is adapted to uh, what you are facing and to your own operational context. What kind of order are you facing depending on where and how you operate? For example, do you use the icing? Do you operate in hot and humid condition? Do you perform cold soak? And this guidance will be able to fit your internal policy about the odors management. And this internal briefing can include first a training of the flight crew and the cabin crew. This is important that this training is common. It can be based on the Airbus list of orders, defining a common way to name the orders, having sample whenever possible to train on the order recognition and based on that to define dedicated cabin crew actions.
And then something that is really helpful is a mapping of the orders depending on the various occurrences. And finally, this is important to encourage the internal reporting by defining a common process to report the orders by requesting some accurate information such as the order description and the characteristic, the most probable sources and also the various symptoms. And for that, the Airbus uh, example and also the ICO example can really be helpful to define this internal uh, template. So to summarize this briefing, to manage fume with odors, we have the following steps. First, we have the prevention means with some dedicated procedure and technique in the FCTM and in the FCOM. We have also some maintenance and troubleshooting procedure for the prevention means. And we have some useful information in the ISI article. Then this is important to get a tailored, a customized briefing and guideline within the airline with a common way to manage the orders, common way to name them, common way to report the information, and more widely, a close internal collaboration within the flight crew, the maintenance, and also the engineering. And finally, in flight, in case of fume with other event, as long as you are not 100% sure of the event and the threat behind, rely on the smoke procedure. So in conclusion to that briefing, we have seen that to manage fume with odors in flight, we have two main points to have in mind. The first one is to always remain on the side of the safety by sticking to the Airbus smoke procedure philosophy to manage any smoke and fume with odors in flight. And then the second point is to use the Airbus material and the uh, regulation material to develop specific and customized internal briefing to be able to recognize the orders and to help the flight crew in their decision making. A320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching.